What's up guys, CB Motor here back with another video and today we're here with another keyboard review in our budget series of keyboards from Amazon or really just from the internet thanks to, well, you guys who go ahead and ask me all the time what do I think of insert super cheap keyboard right here and this is another one that comes up quite regularly for people who want to buy a quick and cheap keyboard and apparently some SEO on this is apparently good enough that a lot of you guys are finding it so today we're going to be taking a look here and boy Boy, does this really put the nasty in cheap and nasty and honestly makes me think how can a product be this bad and yet so easy to buy and search online so um let's take a little bit of a look at it but actually looking at the box might suggest the complete opposite to my last statement with the full color printing marketing this guy actually looks like it's from a reputable manufacturer that actually looks like it would be a decent keyboard Sure, if we go ahead and look at the Amazon listing, we're kind of getting some poor grammar and English, but nevertheless, the box itself uh, definitely looks the part. And if we go back then to the Amazon listing and take a little bit of a closer look, well, okay, there are a little bit of a few standout things, like this keyboard has double injection color molding. I don't know what color molding is. I think they mean double injection keycaps, but color molding, I don't really know and uh, it also too has a stainless steel backing or actually in reality just has bare metal backing because hey they couldn't be bothered painting it to save a few extra bucks right here and more looks like a truck carrying aluminium rather than stainless steel crashed into the factory taking out all their backings so they just used the backings that came off whatever random truck anyway point being it isn't so crash hot. But taking a close look at the actual keyboard itself, we do find it contains many, many, many keyboard sins with a shortened backspace, a weird enter key, a freaking dedicated button in place of the right click to turn the LEDs on and off. Sure, nobody really uses this particular key, but damn it, why isn't it there? And uh, the bottom row of keys, including the spacebar, are all just super fat for whatever particular reason, which makes you kind of in a little bit of a weird hand gesture. It's not super pronounced, especially on camera, and it's not something you really notice until you kind of look at it side by side from a regular keyboard to this guy. And in fact, uh, this guy has a really thick space bar, which is in fact the reason why I picked this guy up to use as a keyboard on the floor for my teleprompter as I use the space bar and my foot to move the teleprompter up and down. And uh, this guy's got a really big space bar and that's the only really thing I can think to use of it. It does have an integrated bulge thing instead of any feet to adjust the height. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the height, you can't. You're stuck with this particular height, which is not exactly my favorite thing. Personally though, I do like sort of elevated and angled keyboards. Sure, I like that, but I do know there are people out there who do prefer a flat kind of typing rather than an angled keyboard. So this guy is not going to be for you. Uh, continuing on with the ridiculousness of this keyboard, the LED lighting does a sweet job of lighting up everything around the keys rather than the keys themselves, as unfortunately the key lettering is just way too dear and the actual lighting just sort of escapes around the side, which is a really big shame. They couldn't even get the lighting right. The keyboard's designed terribly. It's not really overly that great. Um, the keycaps themselves though are pretty atrocious with the spacing and, uh, sorry, with the space bar rather, and also to stabilizing little bars, feeling like they're actually broken on all the keys. It sort of just lets the space bar flop around. Uh, the shift and enter keys are kind of loose and rattly. I mean, have a listen right here. So, okay then, there's a lot to dislike about this guy, but what are some positives? There must be something positive about it. Well, um, it does have a nice braided cable, and, uh, yeah, uh, 
I don't really know what else to actually say. As much as I really don't like making negative videos about products, when I saw this guy on the internet, it doesn't look that bad. But once you do get it in person, it is an absolute atrocious keyboard. Uh, looking in my comment sections, a lot of people have asked about this specific keyboard, and um, I'm kind of happy that I never actually recommended this because, man, this is a really bad buy. Uh, in fact, this is actually the first keyboard that I didn't even type the script for the video on on the keyboard as I usually use these keyboards. I play some video games, I do some typing tests, and then I write the actual script that I'm gonna well, talk about in the video uh, with the keyboard that I am reviewing. So I can get a fairly decent in-depth typing experience with it as these reviews are anywhere from two to three pages on the original script that then sort of get cut down and there's a fair bit of typing that is involved. And um, this is the first keyboard I've reviewed that I just could not stand typing on. The spacebar was all over the place, the backspace was terrible. Uh, have a look at some of these typing samples, it's just not great. If we go ahead and jump over to the gaming side, yeah, it is a little bit better. However, the fact that the spacebar feels like it's constantly broken and it's just wobbling all over the place uh, did cause me to go ahead and accidentally misclick and a couple times. So for instance, when I wanted to jump, I just didn't jump because I thought I'd hit it, but it actually didn't. Um, the keycaps themselves, whereas for example, WASD do seem relatively fine, although a little bit on the stiff side, Every time there's a keycap with a stabilizer, so shift, caps, lock, enter, uh, spacebar, all of them just feel loose and wobbly and just really don't feel that great. So everything you need to do in a game that doesn't involve jumping or whatever shift might be for maybe say sprinting or enter or something like that is fine. Just don't expect to hit a key with a stabilizer in there. So it's all looking pretty negative. You might be thinking, well, okay then, yes, it's a cheap keyboard. What was I really expecting? Well. Actually, I was expecting a lot more, thanks to the fact that the price tag is 35 Australian dollars, which is simply just not good enough. Sure, it has lighting, but calling it a gaming keyboard or even just calling it a keyboard at all is quite the overstatement for the $35. I do have to say, if this guy was $15 or even $10, this review would be a complete flip around because it's actually delivering quite a lot for like $10, maybe even $5 versus $35. There's a lot of other keyboards out there that are also two rubber domes that have much nicer feeling rubber domes than this guy does that have lighting or in some cases don't have lighting, but all in all deliver a much much better typing experience for that same $35 price tag. In fact, the other keyboards that reviewed that would have popped up, well, right there at the start of this video, or I'll even link down below, are uh, also to all feel much better to type on and come in at or around $35 Australian dollars, which really puts a sharp sting in this guy because you're paying a lot and not really getting much at all. The design is terrible and has like raw metal because hey, who needs to paint that? And the actual keyboard that you're typing on is also too really not that great. And I guess that brings us to the conclusion recommendation slash TLDR time of this video. Do I recommend this keyboard? Well, simply no, unless it's on sale for like five or $10. And even then that is going to be a bit of a push. And I probably would never recommend this to be a main keyboard again and maybe if you have another task, for instance, like me, I'm gonna be using it as a teleprompter a keyboard on the floor. Maybe you have a computer out in the garage that's gonna get absolutely filthy, then yeah, maybe for 10, 15 bucks, it might be a bit of a better deal there. But honestly, it is just not worth it. There are so many other better keyboards that are either less expensive or the same price that deliver a much better timing experience that we've already checked out and are so much better here. My biggest gripe with this guy really is just the poor stabilization of the keys that then leads to making some keyboard sort of mistakes, some inaccuracies there that you would then go ahead and hit backspace, but because it's got a shortened backspace, you're constantly hitting the slash key and everything just compacts itself and it's really not so great. The lighting on this particular guy also too isn't so crash hot with the light bleeding around every other part of the key except through the actual keys themselves. It's really, really dim when we do compare it to even other budget keys out there. And this guy also twists and flex far more than I would like to see, even though it has a full metal build on the back. And typing just sounds and feels really, really bad.
And whilst it's better for gaming than it is actually typing, it does amaze me what kind of rubbish is being sold here for this particular price tag. And I guess if you really want to check one out, I'll leave them linked down in the description box, but I strongly recommend checking out the other videos that we've done about similarly priced keyboards and mice but are just so much better all-around packages. So I'll leave them linked also to down below. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.